Right, this is an XS650 Yamaha rotor. Um, and there seems to be quite a lot of confusion on the net, um, especially on some of the forums with this item. If people have problems charging on their bike, just to clarify, this is the rotor and this is the stator. The rotor bolts on the end of the crankshaft and it spins at crankshaft speed inside the stator which is fixed in the casing, engine casing and it's the voltage that goes through the rotor that creates an energy field that inside the stator, when it spins inside that stator it then generates an AC voltage um, which is rectified and regulated by your rectifier and regulator and then charges your battery so that's basically the basic charging system but just looking at the rotor, if you get the rotor off at any time it's really worth giving it a bit of a clean up, which I've done here I've just used some very fine um, emery or um, wet and dry, this is P240 and I've actually used it on various other things so that it's really smooth, there's virtually nothing there but there should be plenty of meat on this but just basically go around very carefully cleaning it up cleaning off some of the filth and muck so you've got nice contacts for those brushes there's me a bit of paper. Here. See, so get all the dirt and filth off as best you can. And then for testing the rotor, it's very simple. Just get your multimeter, set your multimeter to 200 ohms, and just measure the ohms. First of all, by touching the leads together, mine's 0.7. So that's the resistance in the leads themselves. So I've got to deduct that from whatever reading I get from the rotor. So remember, I've got to deduct 0.7. So on the rotor itself, we get a reading of 3.7. I deduct 0.7, that's 3 ohms. Now, Ideally, that should be measuring between 4 and 5 ohms, so this is definitely on its way out, this rotor. It probably will still work, It'll probably get a good, good enough voltage to charge the battery, but um, it's not ideal. What I'm going to do is I'll probably put this back on the bike when I rebuild the engine and um, test it, and I want to run the bike um, before I decide how I'm going to go with it. I'm going to buy a new rotor, or get this rewound, or maybe go with... Um, a different type of charging system altogether. So that is what you're looking for is between four and five ohms there. The other test you need to do is put your multimeter onto uh, continuity there and if you put leads together now you should hear a clear whistle. Now measure each track to earth which is anywhere on the, the body that's nice and clean like for instance the center there and you should get a one on the multimeter I'm not going to show you this, I'm sure. Let's have a look. There we are. And again there, which means it's not shorting to earth. So that's okay. If you've got any reading on there at all between any of the, either of the tracks and earth, then that would be a duff rotor and useless. Okay, so basically, just want to show you one other thing. The way this works is that you put 12 volts through the, two, the windings here via the brushes from the stator. The voltage actually creates an energy field within the rotor itself and when that spins inside the stator that's what generates the AC voltage in your stator. To test this quite easily um, there is a, something called a slap test. <laughs> I did wonder what that was. Basically what it is is you put the 12 volt through the rotor when it's on the bike um, and I'm going to simulate that with this battery here and then you put um, some feeder gauges or something very very thin metal um, very close to the rotor and what should happen is when you turn the switch on on your bike 12 volts passes through the rotor and it should generate a field which will actually act as a magnet and pull your feeder gauge in to slap the side of the crankcase so that's the slap test and I'll demonstrate this here's a 9 volt battery just stick it on the rotor between the two tracks like that and you can see there quite clearly that there's a magnetic field. If you don't get that magnetic field, then there's something wrong. Let's show you again. 
see there's, there's nothing there now. Obviously, I'm not getting the contacts properly on the, on there. There, no. What's that? Hmm. There we go. So you can see it quite clearly that there's a good, powerful magnet being created there. If you don't get that effect, then what you need to check is that you're getting 12 volts to the brush uh, in the stator. So you'll need to check your 12 volt from the switch, your, your electrical switch, when you switch on the, the bike from the key switch. 12 volt is fed through one brush to, the, to, to one of the rings here, um, stator lands, and it comes through the windings back through the other one to earth. So what you need to check is, one, you need to check whether you've got 12 volts on the wire that uh, the brown wire which feeds your 12 volts to the rotor and if you've got that then you need to check that you've got an earth from the other brush and the way to do that quite simply is just to get a wire uh, connect it to one of the brush that is the earth wire and take it straight to your chassis on the bike somewhere uh, and by earthing that if it then creates a force field and works then you know that you've got a bad earth somewhere to the frame or the regulator's faulty depending on the age of the bike. So that's it, basically, is how to test your rotor. Obviously, if it's on the bike, on the crank, it's not easy to access these, these uh, lands here, uh, and you have to be um, a bit more... Uh, it's, it is very much more difficult. You have to remove the brushes to get at it. I'm lucky I've got the thing off because I've got to replace the uh, seal, the oil seal, and rebuild the engine. So while it's off, I thought I'd give it a check. And that's it.